Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're in a we're in a fab shop today, and what you see here is the beginnings of a gantry crane that I'm building. Yeah, there I got one going that way. Got the other one the opposite way on the bench. Uh, I just went through my scrap pile, so there's a little bit of everything here. Uh, five by five, three eighths wall. Some five by five half inch wall. Got some four by four bracing quarter inch wall. <clears throat> just a, just a bunch of stuff out of the scrap pile. I need to get a gantry crane built because I cannot get anything onto the SIP uh, jig bore because uh, you know there's I can't get a engine hoist under it or anything. So uh, when you when you get the paperwork with your SIP, they show an overhead hoist. Uh, an I-beam with a chain fall. Uh, the load for the SIP table is 4,000 pounds, so I want this to lift two tons, <clears throat> and I'm sure it'll do it. Like I say, this is heavy enough material, a little bit of everything in here. Uh, I've got a beam for it outside, and I'm welding everything together. I'm not going to worry about bolting it together. This is a specific size rig, and it will live right next to the, the SIP jig bore. Uh, the width is is just going to be eight eight feet, just enough to span the table. And I'm not going crazy prepping stuff. It's, uh, a little bit of the service rust. I'm just walking some uh, some 6010 into the joints here. You know, with this heavy rounded stuff here, you really got to weave and fill that. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but 6010 bites right in there real good. If I have to. I'll make a few passes over the 6010. I'll give it a wire brushing and, uh, and lay some 7018 in there if I'm, if I'm concerned about it. <clears throat> but these are awfully heavy. And I don't know. I might have to build an extension for the tractor, a little boom or something to get these out of here. They're, they're terribly heavy. Just this one 9-foot piece of 5x5 five five half-inch wall was a real bear. I had to lift it up, drag it in, and put half on the table. It, it, it was crazy. So now with the wheels on it, the bottom piece, the two angles, it's going to be it's going to be tough. But I've got everything roughly fit. Those long angles on this quarter-inch wall stuff, I was able to cut with the Milwaukee metal cutting saw. Oh, it's kind of too big for the band, so I couldn't hold it good. So I just marked both sides and cut it with the Milwaukee saw. And the cuts came out very nice. So, I've got a lot of welding to do today. Uh, I'm not going to show any of that really. It's just uh, a lot of stuff to do. I've got to weld all around here. I've got to weld my braces in. I've got long welds there. So, I'll try and get that done. And uh, I'll bring it back from time to time and show you how I'm doing. Okay guys, got everything welded up here, uh, and as you saw in the photos, I was doing some uh, 6010 root, 7018 cover. Uh, I, I like to do, I like 6010 for minimal, minimally prepared steel. Uh, if I had sandblasted all this, I might have, uh, I might have ran some uh, structural MIG wire in there, but um, <clears throat> When stuff is rusty and I just run over it with the grinder, I like to uh, burn the 6010 in there and then finish off with a 7018 cap. So that's all done. Uh, I've had to flip these guys a couple times and uh, yeah, if you guys are going to make a chain fall gantry yourself, I don't recommend going this heavy. They're a real bear to flip. Uh, this is a, a heavy unit. I've got three wheels on each um, upright. Uh, these are super heavy duty here, so no problem lifting two tons or more. 
and I've got some caps on top to accept the beam and I cannot get these off the bench now that they're fully welded and assembled so I gotta make something for the tractor to get them out of here but uh, the welding is done and if you're wondering both of these containers started out full 6010 here on the right 7018 and uh, so I burned a lot of rod. Yeah, maybe some MIG, you know, MIG welding. That's what most guys are doing these days. Maybe some MIG welding uh, would be faster. But uh, every time I lift something, I won't have to worry about anything going bad. And uh, peace of mind is good for me. So this is just how I like to do things. It's a little bit slower, but the penetration is much, much, much better. So let's go out this way. And... Here is the beam that I picked out of my scrap pile. 12 inches tall and four, yeah, I think it's four inches wide. I had some heavier beams. I've got a 12 inch wide by eight inch tall heavy beam. I've got some of that 18 inch. Uh, 50 pound a foot beam but um, that's getting real heavy and yeah, I'm not gonna go like that so I think that I think that guy there is gonna is gonna be fine like I say I, I need to lift engines and the rotary table and stuff like that so we're not gonna get crazy and, and I had that so we're gonna use it but uh, that's the trouble when you have stuff you got you, you tend to make things like this is way too heavy and and, and uh, you know just to move around. Uh, once it's rolling it shouldn't be a problem but uh, I'll be back again when I have this outside of the shop and when the top beam is on and I'm gonna go looking around for a chain fall now I might have one laying around somewhere so see if I can find a chain fall today and uh, I'll be back with you and uh, I might even paint this, but I'll be back with you when the, when the beam is on the top and stuff and show you what's going on. Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, kind of a warm day here. February 1st, dealing with mud instead of ice. Got the gin pole truck running. kind of tricky. I had to lay it down on the uh, rollback and get everything squared away. But uh, let's bring this guy around and see if we can't get it in the door. Hey guys, I got a long chain, uh, two 25 footers together, hooked to the beam, and I just got it flopped into place. I'm out here on the tractor, 
and I have the bottom of it lashed to the, uh, the lift and that kept the bottom from moving out on me this side got a strap on there and a strap on that side and there she sits I think I have just enough room to get under the lift bar but right now I'm gonna get it uh, kind of positioned so I can get Scott Scrambler back on a lift and then we've got 90 feet to go through a maze of stuff and there's the sip way down the other end so got a little bit to do but um, it's been a battle to get this far but it's in here um, you know sometimes you got to just think outside the box and put things in sideways when you have to uh, it was just easier than trying to figure out another way welding it in here it's it's super heavy uh, like I say I used a lot of this is all material I had laying around so uh, five by five uh, half inch wall and uh, five by five three eighths wall so this is super super heavy but that's what I wanted for lifting stuff onto the machine there's no kill like overkill as they say so I'll feel safe every time I lift something so let me get some stuff cleaned up and while the gin pole is down do a little maintenance uh, it's not often I get to grease that guy way up there so I'll get the pulleys greased and everything and just get this put away for now and uh, come back and set it up again another day Okay guys, got a little further along today than I thought I was going to. Just getting it into final place now. things back into place rotary table and uh, get a block on here pretty quick I want to do some uh, test passes uh, I just got to go get the chain fall and the beam trolley and and then we'll be all set I'm already set up for the blocks as you know and we just got to get a way to lift them up here so um, There she is, and we'll get the uh, get the chain fall on there next. But uh, you can see I made it just specifically for this machine. I got plenty of height on it, and the width isn't really any bigger than I needed. We don't need to take up any more space in here, so this will be perfect. I can get in and out and all alongside there. So this is going to work out pretty nice. Okay guys, I got the beam trolley on there now, and I have a heavy chain fall, and this is a gear drive one, and I was having a bear of a time getting it up there, but luckily uh, my buddy Ken showed up from Florida just in time, and we both got on a ladder, it took two of us to get it up there, monster shackle it's hanging from and finally have our first test block hanging from the chain fall I'm gonna get it set down on there now and we will start figuring out our first uh, bore and we're getting closer
Okay, got it sitting down now. Next thing we're going to have to do is figure out how to hold this guy in this direction. I know this, that our bar is perfectly flat. We'll just check it again, but we need to get it held in this direction. And then uh, we'll figure out how to hold it down so we can take the chain off and stuff and put some hold downs and everything. But um, we're at a good place right now. And uh, next time when I come back, uh, we'll actually be, we'll throw a boring bar in there and we'll actually bore a hole, see how it goes, see what kind of pre precision we get. And uh, uh, we're getting closer. But um, this has been a, uh, I don't know, a little bit of a lengthy video, but I just wanted to show you the gantry crane I needed to build for this. Uh, and like I say, the chain falls up there now, so I can pick up a block by myself. I can get it set up and... Uh, We'll get it indicated in, and I will show you the boring next. So, uh, as always, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. We'll be uh, we'll be making some cast iron chips on the next one, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So, thanks again. See you on the next one.